Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an out-of-the-pack review of the Legio Custodes Achilles Dreadnought by Forgeworld. So, here we have it. A svelte new design box. This is a, a new addition to the packaging lineup for Forgeworld and replacing uh, having all the parts in a, in a tight little blister that we've seen before. So I wonder what we're going to find in here. This was released yesterday, so it's Saturday today. I've been on a little shopping trip today and acquired this and a couple of other goodies. If you remember back to my reportage video uh, from the New Year's event, there were two things that really caught my eye in the Custodes uh, and Talon's miniature previews on the day. And the first was the Cronus Grav Carrier, which I've already got, and the second uh, was this the Achilles Contempt to Dreadnought? And this is a this seems to be a highly offensive Dreadnought in terms of its offensive capabilities. I'm sure it's very polite, and it's equipped with a large halberd um, with a powerful energy weapon in the tip. So let's have a look at this because um, I'm very excited by this model. Um, I'm always excited by Contempt of Dreadnoughts in general because Forge or Contempt of Dreadnoughts are fantastic models and they're always a joy to pose. But this this model I think is uh, oh, hello, good is this model I think is moving the posability up to the next level. So we'll put that there. Right. So well, first um, first thing. Well, let's get the uh, let's get the technical bit out of the way. So we get the uh, guide to working with resin kits. So comprehensive uh, how to as usual. Quality control today was provided by uh, the person I called me, uh, and this model is actually hot off the press because this was QC'd on the twenty third of February. So yeah, only um, a couple of weeks ago, and we have. I think this is a first for a kit so small. We have a A4 color CAD instruction manual. Legio Custodes Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought. A little bit of blurb there, which uh, if you want to uh, do a little pause and read, please feel free to. And there it is in its uh, golden goodness. Uh, we've always wonderful fine filigree on its armor. That's my favorite word when we talk about custodian details, filigree. Then a component list and uh, 43 parts. Now there must be more than 43 because there are a number of times twos there. But yeah, a lot of components. And I'm detecting we've got an increased range of motion on the limbs than what we've had with the contemptors previously, uh, just by the sheer part count here. The usual bits and bobs. Oh, yeah, some nicer armor nomenclature here. The grieve and the cooter. Let's have a get some alternate feet. An idea there around posing. Posing is going to be fun on this, and I'm going to take a look at some um, reenactors fighting with halberds and pole axes um, to get a fighting stance. And in particular, I'm going to look at the um, weapons that made Britain program by uh, a guy called Mike Lords. And he has a section on Pollux fighting. Um, and I'm, I'm quite interested to see if I can pull a fighting stance from that. Yeah, that's how we've got lots of articulation. And I think we get a full set of weapons in terms of alternative wrist mounted weapons. So, anyway, that's enough of pretty pictures. Let's drop the camera down a little bit and take a look at some parts. So we've got a clear plastic tray and the parts have been divided into two halves. I'm presuming this bubble wrapped part half here uh, is going to be um, the dread spear. And if I open this up, I can refer to the names because I'm still getting familiar with the whole custodian and Talon's force. The big chopper is the Achilles Dread Spear. There we go, wasn't too far off, was I? All right, let's have a look at some of these components then. All right, what's first? Ah, I see a torso. There we go, that worked actually. Let's just raise the camera a bit. 
it's got a bit of shadow there. Right, what do we think? Oh, wow. Well, very, um, very ornately detailed. And uh, nicely cast to boot. That looks, um, that looks lovely, a lovely piece that. A little bit of cleanup, but nothing, uh, nothing dramatic at all. Right, let's do some more. Right, what's this? Uh, this looks like, I think this is a waist. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Some big chunky piping. Feet, so I said we might have some feet and we look like we have many feet, so we have four feet. So assuming this isn't a quadruped, we've got, so we've got a flat left and right foot, I presume, and then a on tiptoe left and right foot as well. So that's excellent options for posability on this kit. It's nice to see this range of options included. Look at the style on that. That's very medieval plate armor style, isn't it? It's a very stylistic look to the um, to the dreadnought's armor. But of course, uh, it's and it, it, if it looks anachronistic, its combat prowess is far from it. It's quite the opposite. This is uh, this is a unit that's um, at the forefront of mankind's weapons technology. So look at so these are these are the thighs, I believe. Yep, I like the thighs. And again, we've got all this very ornate filigree carving and detail running around it. A little bit of mold lines to take away there. And a little bit a little bit of slippage in there. So what's that like? More uh, more than you'd like, but it's um it's livable with it's look that's that's workable and, and to be honest if I uh, by the time it's posed, um, it may not even be seen. Right, what do we have here? We have, oh, we have a head. We have some other bits. Yeah, so there's a head. Again, sticking with the medieval look. You know, this is reminiscent of, hmm, late 15th and more moving into 16th century plate armors in terms of its style. So yeah, very, um, Renaissance style, perhaps even. And uh, what are these two? Are these shoulders? I think these are two shoulders. Looks like there's lots of detail there for, which is going to be visible depending how you pose it. Uh, and here we have the first of the leg greaves. These have got these very striking um, imperial wings with this sword thrust through the middle. Clean up there. That's, yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, that's nothing. These um these parts all look nice and clean. Um, no, uh, I can't see any evidence of release agent on these. These look very uh, very nicely turned out. Very nicely turned out indeed. But easy to prepare. A little bit of a distortion there uh, in the cast. So that will need filling, but f the the edge of the armor plate has been preserved, so that'll be easy to reform. So that's a it's no big deal. Uh, what should we look at next? We have uh, ooh, double headed imperial eagle. I thought these guys were single headed. Hmm. This looks like the top of a torso. So the head is going to go here. Yeah, looks beautiful, very nicely cast. And here we have the uh, exhaust vents for the rear. So this is kind of like the rear panel of the torso. Yeah, a little slippy to move and move there, but not. But little, little slippies are fine. We can deal with little slippies, we don't mind little slippies. Very good. This is the hips. And there we have 
Yeah. Something that looks like the Crux Terminatus. Interesting. Again, love the fine detailing. These dreadnoughts really capture the fine detail look that we that we associate with the custodians, particularly from um, the Visions of Heresy books and the Horus Heresy card game series, which really kind of um, captured that look, shall we say, for the first time. Right, what else we got? Uh, oh, this should be uh, hands. These are very different hands to what we're accustomed to with Contempt Dreadnoughts. These, these hands look dexterous, yet strong, and f much more sophisticated than the sort of bludgeoning power claws and power fists that we're accustomed to with Dreadnoughts. A very different level of sophistication. I guess this is, this is sort of alluding to the skill with which this dreadnought will be able to wield its main weapon. It's pauldron time. So you've got one essentially clear pauldron and then another which bears again this the this sort of crux terminatus cross and, the, and a laurel and a wreath. This is going to be a this will be a joy to put together this. Um, there's very little cleanup. I think this is a, looking like an excellent candidate for a bit of the old time lapse. I think this time I'm going to I'm going to take all the parts off the keys and get them cleaned up and then just do the assembly and see if that works better time-wise for a resin kit. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm definitely going to go for it on this guy. These are forearms, so there's a couple of a couple of minor slips to correct there. Ah, interesting. Let me find a weapon. So we've got we have a hole and a hole and a connection there which only leads to one conclusion. Pre-drilled for magnetization. Lovely. Oh, forge-rolled. Now this is what it's all about. This is a, this is very nice. This is responding and kind of the, the way the hobby is developing. So that is excellent. Uh, oh, we have more hands. I don't know how many hands we're going to get. I think we're going to get two clenched hands and two open hands to allow you to pose the the dread spear the halberd in a number of different ways so you could have one hand open one closed uh, vice versa and then both hands on the halberd and maybe a bit more seems like i've got a lot of hands there so both on the hands and feet excellent choices i'm going to leave the weapons last what's what's this this is a uh, the, oh, what are these called i've forgotten already um Cooter. There you go. These are cooter plates. So these are like the side plates for the knees and the elbows. And then we have parts of the arm assemblies. Oops. Come back, focus. Yes. Again, this this is a very nicely turned out example. There's going to be very little cleanup to do and 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 very little release agent evident. Right, weapons. Here we get a full complement of optional weapons with this kit. We get, um, I think, are these Lastrum Storm Bolters? Oh yes, I got it right. There you go, that's not bad. Yeah. And note, Storm Bolter, the first appearance of a Storm Bolter in 30K. They look great. Love the detail, really nice detail. And these echo, these have got design cues that echo towards, they remind me of the Lastrum bolt cannons from the uh, Coronas. Yeah, they do remind me of those. Got a couple more, I think, oh, they're knee pads perhaps. Uh, and then we have the second set of weapons, uh, including my favorites, uh, which I will leave to last now. So the flamers are called incinerators. My favourite of a lot is the Adrathic Destructors, um, or to me and you, Disintegrator Guns. Yeah. So isn't that great, getting a full set of weapons in this kit, and all pre-drilled for magnets as well, and a sensible size of magnet as well. So yeah, dead impressed with that. That really adds value to this as a kit, if you ask me. Standard... Um, 
60 mil base clean up there and then finally we have I'll just move that it's party piece and this is the uh, Achilles dread spear safe to say this has a blade of considerable choppiness yeah I seem to recall that this thing is beastly on the charge and strikes at strength D strength D for a dreadnought ye gods nice spike I think about the combat pose using these these weapons yeah and then there's the uh, is it Laz Pulsar I believe it's a uh, the little surprise it's like a pocket last cannon a rapid fire pocket last cannon how about that yeah wonderful yeah lovely looking weapon and again you know beautifully cast that that isn't that's oh yeah i mean you know when i, when I buy four draw kits that's that you know this is this is everything that you that you hope to get and it looks fantastic I was a little bit. I was wondering about this as to whether or not how um, how rigid it would be, whether or not it would need cutting and putting a wire, a, a pin through it. It, that, it looks reasonably sturdy, so I'm not sure about that. So it's quite. A, it'll be quite a drastic bit of work to do what I said then. So I'm hoping it's strong enough in itself. Great looking piece. So. There you have it, um, my out of the pack review of the Legio Custodes Achilles Contemptor Dreadnought by Forgeworld. This one looks an absolute cracker. Uh, I'm really impressed by the options that come with this kit, and particularly when you contrast it to uh, comparable Contempt kits. And this costs a few pounds more than an equivalent Contemptor, but you're getting a lot more options here, and it looks like a bit, quite a bit more posability so you know i think for that couple of pounds extra look, yeah this one looks like it's well worth the money anyway um let me know what you think of this uh, new addition to the talons of the emperor force uh, but yes as always thank you very much for watching i'll speak to you next time and goodbye